Uh, Mr. Modi is a classic example. I interviewed the Prime Minister 11 years ago. The interview lasted roughly for about three minutes. He then ended it. And after it ended, uh, he was polite enough to offer me tea and mithai and dhokla while I was persisting for a whole hour to try and convince him to do the interview. Anyway, I failed. I left. His last words were, if I recall correctly, Karan brother, I love you. Dilli aayenge tum bhojan karenge. But uh, 11 years have passed. He's been to Delhi. He now lives in Delhi. There's no question of bhojan karoing. And we haven't even met in those 11 years. So yes, relationships can be very badly affected. Benazir Bhutto was a good close friend and I've had to interview her many times, not just when she was leader of the opposition but also when she was Prime Minister of Pakistan. And there's always an assumption on her part or any friend's part when they agree to an interview that you will be friendly. There must have been several questions that I asked her and which I not just asked but then pushed and persisted with that would have in a sense taken her by surprise, occasionally upset her, maybe even on odd occasions annoyed her because that is the nature of interviewing a politician. They have things they don't want to have to address. They don't want to be pushed beyond a certain point. On the other hand, you're a journalist, you know you've got a job to do and persistence and ensuring that you get a credible answer, exposing answers that are not credible until you get a better answer is part of your job. And therefore, there will be many occasions when my persistence would have upset her, uh, riled her, annoyed her, but it never became a breaking point in the relationship. Benazir, for example, would always say to me at the end of an interview, listen, let's have some ice cream together because she adored ice cream. She particularly loved Ben and & Jerry's. And she said, let's have some ice cream together. It'll cool you down. And it's more important that we get this interview over with because otherwise it can affect the relationship. Mr. Dhwani, at the end of a particular interview um, done, I think, in 2006, uh, when he had ceased to be BJP president, and that was an interview that Mr. Dhwani didn't like. Perhaps he was unprepared for it. Perhaps he didn't think that would be my line of questioning. And he asked me to redo it. And I, in the end, said no. The interview then got broadcast exactly as it was shot and not as Mr. Dhwani would have wanted redone. And that did affect the relationship and it did damage it. Jaya Lalitha is another example. That's also in the book, how she wanted the interview that I did with her for the BBC to be redone and I didn't agree. And that did affect the relationship. Although in her instance, when she met me the next time around, she was extremely charming. In fact, she literally swept me off my feet by her charm and took me completely by surprise. Let me begin by saying that I don't think I've ever crossed a line that I shouldn't have crossed. In other words, behaved unjournalistically or unprofessionally or perhaps even immorally or unethically. Um, I've pushed, no doubt, to the point at which I've often offended interviewees and even annoyed them, but that's because I thought I was right to do so. Someone else, judging what I've done, might come to the conclusion, you have pushed a line. But yes, I've often said that I'm aware that some of my questions may have upset you, and I apologize for that. It was not my intention to upset you, but I was simply, and I hope you will accept this, doing a job that I believe is my job to do. During one of the tape changes, Amitabh Bachchan told me a story about a Warren Beatty interview that he'd seen, where the interviewer asked Warren Beatty about the women in his life. Samitab said, we all have heard the stories about the women in Warren Beatty's life, but to have him questioned about this was a different experience altogether. And I said to myself, this is a bizarre thing to say to someone who's interviewing you during a tape change. Is he giving me a hint? And I asked him about Rekha, I asked him about Praveen Babi, the two ladies that I was aware of. And beyond that, I didn't know more. So I then switched to his wife who's sitting on the sofa beside him. And I said, do you believe your husband? And she looked at him and she said, yes, I do. Why on earth shouldn't I? And I said, are you saying that because you genuinely believe him or only because he's sitting beside you? And she laughed and she said, no, 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 I always believe my husband. And then we reverted to the rest of the prepared interview and we carried on for another 40 minutes. And when it ended, uh, Amitabh absolutely insisted that the crew and I stay for lunch, even though we demurred and said, no, no, we ought to get back. He said, no, 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 you must, you must. And so we did. And it was when we were sitting down to lunch, Amitabh 
began to show irritation and irritability and that then quickly developed into annoyance and anger and it exploded almost like a volcano on his wife and he was extremely uh, publicly uh, irritably rude to her in his manner. He didn't say anything that was rude but he was very rude in his manner, tone and behavior and we realized at once that actually this was intended for us, for me in particular, not for poor Jaya Bachchan but she was the victim on whom this anger was exploding. It was pouring out like lava out of a volcano and we very quickly excused ourselves and left. I can certainly tell you what is the most difficult personality that I've ever interviewed, A.R. Rahman. I've never come across a person who is so shy, so positively tongue-tied. His answers were, mm. When I asked him the second question, his answer was, mm. When I asked him the third, it was, mm. And absolutely flummoxed, I said, tell me, what's the difference between, mm, mm, and, mm. And he said, mm. And you know, we had to do the interview three times. when you meet people who are considered celebrities and high and mighty and it's a disappointing experience because the reality turns out to be very different to what you had in mind and there is because there is a certain reputation of Amal Clooney as a human rights lawyer who defends freedom of speech and the fact that she was censoring a particular channel from broadcasting the interview and the question and answer session to me seemed like a contradiction and that felt as if she was not living up to the image and impression we had of a stalwart defender of human rights. When it applied to her, the standards that she was applying to herself were very different. And that in a sense also was true of Barack Obama, who is a great hero for the world and in a sense a great hero for me as well. And yet he was so defensive and self-protective, so unwilling to answer questions that he considered awkward or difficult, even though they pertain to things that he'd done as president. And these were the sort of questions he should have expected, particularly from an Indian audience, and yet he was actually getting his team to censor them, to have them struck out. He wanted the list of questions in advance. He then deleted the five that he didn't like, and he was upset that one or two of them were then brought back and still asked. There was an interview with Raja and Radha Reddy, uh, the two wives of the same husband. Um, they're sisters as well, and uh, they're great dancers. And we interviewed them for the BBC program Face to Face. Um, and it worked brilliantly because of the relationship between the three of them, and I think also because of the fun nature of the questioning. And they were quite happily talking about the fact that he was married to both women, and both women were sisters, right? And therefore their children were first cousins as well as half-brothers, and we had a rollickingly good time just laughing and joking about it. If I were interviewing Donald Trump, I'd talk to him about his attitude to the media, also about uh, the nature of his supporters and what it is that he offers them and why he has this core support of 30% that remains so loyal. But I'd also like to talk to him about his manner and language and behavior, uh, his tweets, uh, the strange things he says in his tweets, uh, about his manner and belligerence, which includes his hairstyle, as well as um, the fact that he has this relationship with so many Americans where people laugh at him.